Deep Sea Divers, what are your horror stories? Diving the day before a hurricane on a small South Pacific island, out of nowhere a black and white sea snake, venomous, wrapped itself around my arm. Apparently this happens from time to time before major storms they can sense it and look for things that are heading towards the shore so that they don't have to put in so much effort to get out of the sea. As soon as I was in the shallows it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. I thought I was going to get bitten to death by a snake at sea. Turns out I was just a taxi for a very calm but rather rushed reptile. The only scare I've had is some jack out in a yacht cruising through our dive location at full throttle. You could hear the boat coming for a solid minute or two before it flew over our heads. Our boat had a dive flag on it and we had a boy with a dive flag on it. They didn't even slow down. Barracuda. Sharks. Rays. Manatees. Dolphins. All cool. Humans are way scarier. Free dove to about 160 feet in Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. It's where a lot of the free diving world records are set. Super neat place. Google a picture. Anyway I'd never really been past 100 feet free diving. But this was the perfect place to do it. No current. There's ropes to keep you straight and allow a slight pull back up. Scary part is that you become pretty strongly negatively buoyant after like 60 feet. So you're basically hauling ass down while doing nothing and using very little air. So I'm dazed out a bit feeling good and counting the lines that mark depth and all of a sudden feel pressure like my trachea is going to collapse and wake up and realize I've counted to the line that's around 160 feet or so. Very scary moment because I wasn't sure if my body could take the depth or if I had gone too far and wouldn't have enough air to get back up. Which is a much slower and more air intensive process. Well. Here is my story. I was diving in a local pond with a group of much more advanced divers, cave divers, than I. Just an advanced certification at the time. I am leading the dive. As to get used to pressures and responsibilities of heading the procession. They are mentoring me. It is a Texas puddle. Visibility 10 feet max. Not too deep. Maybe 25 feet. The known horrible visibility makes it impossible to navigate by compass. We follow a line string put by other divers these lines go from one sunken item to another so i know i am about to hit a small sunken boat don't remember which one there are a few similar in a row in the same state of decay so i am first in the group i get to the boat and see someone's black army boot sticking out from the inner quarters curious thing is it looks somewhat new not like items you find on the bottom hard to see too much muck in the water so i touch the boat thinking it is by itself but it won't lift like it is attached to something heavy i put my hand further in and feel the leg continuing out pants the calf and i see the second leg now duck with a big letter f right i turn around and show a sign for the emergency ascent to the group behind me everyone has a sour face no one wants to surface but it is a rule that if one says up, others in a group must abort. No questions. They wanted me to explain with signs why. But what is a diver's sign for a cadaver? I feel like I rush toward the surface. Even though trying to stay calm and take time. So. We are on the lake's surface. I have this adrenaline rush. Can't breath enough. So. I tell them there is a body down there. I see rolling eyes from everyone. Once they see I am serious. A fun bunch. Right? So. I describe in detail what I saw. We go down. It don't lead anymore. We make a group search pattern for the line. But once we locate it. We don't know if we should go forward or backwards. As there are a number of boats on the line and who knows in which the body is in and how far we drifted while talking it out on the surface. Well. We find all boats before finding the original one. Of course. So, our customary leader goes into the cabin of the boat and we wait. I'd say he was rather courageous at this point. Went right in. Then he emerges from the cloud of muck and tells us all to surface. So, gluing information together from what we learned later on. Turns out the police or some other agency had a body recovery training in the same lake the same day. When they went for lunch. They stuffed their fully dressed anatomically correct rubber doll in one of the sunken boats for a few hours for safekeeping. Well, I died a little that day. Saved someone from drowning while scuba diving.
person had an epileptic seizure at 85 feet of water in a pitch black cavern that I was diving also. I was hovering above just watching the flashlights move about when I noticed one flashlight not moving. I swam down and was met with the other diver with no regulator in their mouth. Eyes open and just on their knees. The diver's buddy was next to them and in complete shock to what was going on and was not assisting whatsoever. 15 years of diving and instructor training came over me like it was second nature. I thought her regulator just came out so I popped mine out and offered it to her. That when I noticed she had done mentally checked out, I popped my number 2 regulator in my mouth and attempted to put my number 1 regulator in her mouth but her teeth were completely clenched. I then pressed the purge button to get air into her mouth and noticed her cheeks moving so I know air was getting in there. That was good enough for me. I then grabbed her under her arm and get the regulator flowing in her mouth and swung to the opening of the cavern and then up over 60 feet to get her to the surface. One on the surface did everything I was trained to do. Inflate BC. Dumped her weights. Got her on her back and started towing to land. As I'm towing her in she is regurgitating all the water she swallowed and inhaled. It seemed like gallons of water. Got her to land where other divers assisted me in getting all her gear off. She was breathing fine and alive but in shock for a while and slowly came around like nothing happened. We were very lucky that we were only 10 minutes into the dive or for sure we would have both been bent and spending time in a hyperbaric chamber. The crazy thing is she didn't tell anyone she had epilepsy and when we later reviewed her consent form she checked off no to epilepsy. I put myself at risk shooting up to the surface like that but if I came across that situation again I would not hesitate to save someone's life. Night diving is incredibly creepy. You don't realize how dark the ocean is until you are in it. I dive a lot. Several times a week. My area has a lot of theoretically dangerous things. Sharks and barracudas. Marais and stingrays. Blue ringed octopuses. Cone snails. Box jellies. Siphonophores of all kinds. Sea snakes. Stone fishes and scorpion fishes. Venomous catfish. Brown of thorn starfish and various sea urchins that can hurt you in several different ways. Titan triggerfish. And so on and so on. But only one thing has ever got me. Twice. Are you ready? Clonefish. Like Nemo. They are territorial and brave and will get in your face if you're near their anemones. I usually respect their space. But I was distracted watching something else a couple of times. And turns out they will actually bite if you don't leave their space fast enough. For real though, I don't have particular horror stories. But the scariest moments are probably when I get caught in strong currents and have to crawl on the bottom to fight it. Going hand over hand like I'm climbing a horizontal wall. Despite what a lot of people tend to think, especially looking at the daunting list of dangerous animals in my area, sea critters aren't your problem. You leave them alone and it's fine. Sea conditions like waves or currents, and above all human error, are the real colors. Edit. I just remembered an incident that did scare me. It was a human error equipment failure issue. When you're diving, you want to ascend to the surface slowly. This is because under pressure your blood and tissues can hold more gases, in particular inert nitrogen from your compressed air, dissolved in it than when you're at the surface. And as you ascend to the surface these dissolved gases have to return to being gases. If you're slow, you just breath it out as you come up. But if you're too fast they turn into bubbles of gas in your arteries and veins before they can be vented out. This causes embolisms as well as decompression sickness, aka, the bends. I was diving with a friend at about 25 meters, 82 ft, when her old beat up BCD, the vest that you can inflate with air to control your buoyancy, started to inflate on its own. This has happened to me before as well. But I just disconnected the air hose from the BC immediately and carried on. And went on to do about 10 dives with a busted BC that I only inflated manually. She didn't think to do that. Or didn't have time to do that. This happened very quickly. I saw that she was having buoyancy control issues. She was upside down kicking to try to stay down. But in the few seconds it took for me to realize how bad the problem was. She was already at the surface. Basically I quickly glanced around to see if there was a rock I could use to weigh her down and when I turned back she was gone. I followed her up, but not too quickly. 
and even so my dive computer was beeping warnings at me. When we met up I wondered why she didn't use her dump valve, there is a valve at the bottom of the BC exactly for releasing air when you are feet up, especially since she was experienced and should know to do that. Then I saw that the string you pulled to open the valve was missing. So it was literally impossible to dump the air when oriented that way. So check your gear before you use it. I was pretty worried that she would come down with the bends. But she was fine. People are often worried that I dive alone a lot. But honestly all of my scariest and most anxious moments were problems occurring with other people. Not my story but my parents. They like to scuba dive when traveling and have gone several times over the years. Once they visited Mexico and went diving there before I was born. I'm not sure where they were exactly, but my mom was slightly lower down than my dad and looking at the ocean floor. He was looking up and around. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her. It was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive so it was sparkling. From my mom's puff, she was going along having a grand old time looking at the sea critters below. When suddenly my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. She looked up and a barracuda was directly in front of her, closer than was comfortable and staring intently. Scary teeth on full display. It was focused on the shiny necklace and was just hovering there, transfixed. She slowly moved up her hand to cover the necklace and they slowly and calmly moved away from it and it took off without bothering them anymore. But still pretty unsettling and taught my mom to be a little more aware of her surroundings when diving. The Bifid Dolphin Diving Bell Accident. Long story short, some divers came up from an extremely deep dive at an oil drilling rig, and someone ducked up the decompression procedure and opened the door while the chamber was still pressurized at depth. The four divers were instantly killed, and the one nearest the door literally exploded and they found bits of his body all over the oil rig. So, next time someone tells you that people don't explode in decompression chambers like you see in the movies, tell them they're wrong. Throwaway account. As this story is well known among my circles and it would be easy to identify me, I grew up in Oz. When I was 15, I took the family boat out and dove the reef myself to clear my head. Mistake number 1. I was down at a depth of about 28 meters, 90 feet, when I was only rated for 60 feet. Mistake number 2. Whilst diving, I spotted a 3.5 meters Mako shark coming right at me. For those who are unaware, Marcos are basically the cheaters of the ocean, and they only have two speeds, curious, harmless, and lunch, very much harmful. This guy was in lunch mode, so I hovered, as I had been trained to do, as there would be no way for me to outmaneuver it or escape it. Nowadays, we dive with shark shields, which emit electronic pulses that freak the sharks out and keep them away, but back then, what we used was essentially a chainmail sleeve. The idea being that sharks hate the taste of metal. So if you give it your arm, it'll bite down, decide you're gross, and move along. So I wait, and it comes, and I do a perfect move to give the beastie my arm, just before the crunch. However, it occurred to me that I had left my sleeve on my bed. Mistake number 3. I had my kelp knife drawn, and stabbed it right as it bit me. It swam off, and I was alive. However, now I had a series of problems. 1. I had huge open gashing wounds on my arm from the bite in open water, and was trailing blood everywhere. 2. Once the shock wore off, you realize that you're in salt water and salt and open wounds don't feel good. 3. In a panic, I dropped my weight belt and shot up to the surface without any sort of waiting period. Hello Benz. Mistake number 4. 4. Because I hadn't been paying attention to the currents. I was approximately a quarter mile downstream of my boat. Which means I had to swim up to it. Mistake number 5. 5. When I got to the boat. I really started to wish I had done as my da had said and had the comms fixed. Mistake 6. All that I had upgraded the first aid kit like I had been threatening to do. Mistake 7. So I end up racing back to shore with nothing more than a tarunake to staunch the bleeding. Long story short, my series of unfortunate self-inflicted events earned me 172 stitches. Boatloads of physical therapy because the shark had actually bitten down on my tricep and detached it, and easily identifiable scars on one of my arms for the rest of my life. Oh, 
and I lost my deceased grandfather's favorite kelp knife that he had left me. I did a shipwreck night dive on New Year's Eve one year, and it was spooky as hell. 80 feet down. Really small plane. Visibility was obviously not great, I've only done this one night dive. So these slow moving fish would come looming out of the dark. Scarier to me was getting back on the boat. Because it got really stormy, you'd be looking up at the ladder. And it had come crashing down right next to you. The waves were crazy. My brother got hit by the ladder. But not too badly. And we all managed to get back okay. I know it's not really what you're looking for but none of the other stories so far are even close. I got the bends once. I was careful. Followed my charts and my computer. At appropriate depths and surface time. But I didn't drink enough water so I was all out of whack. Felt fine until I got home. Mild headache. Then I woke up and it was just pain in my left arm. Elbows. Fingers. Couldn't even bend them without bad pain. My headache was intense and I was so dizzy. Called my older more experienced dive buddy and I got rushed to the hospital. Docs got me hooked up and fluids. Checked my dive logs while the decompression chamber was set up. And then got me in there with a nurse. 8 hours in a tube about the length of a car but as wide as maybe a double bed. I was on oxygen and hooked up to an IV and it was so loud. With all the air rushing in. As soon as I got to depth the pain vanished. It was crazy. I'm fine now obviously. But I wasn't allowed to dive for a month which sucked but hey. The dives were pretty great. I wear heavy prescription lenses and can't wear contact lenses. Halfway through a week long liveaboard dive trip. Someone dropped a tank on my prescription mask and shattered it. I usually had a second set with me. But could not find them and only brought one. Because hey. Nothing had ever happened before. I am functionally blind without corrective lenses. I can see colors and that's about it. Starting about 5 inches from my face. I was devastated. But decided to go diving anyway. With my husband as my seeing eye diver. I could see my gauges. So I felt reasonably safe. It was among the most amazing 3 days of diving I've ever had. I saw the colors. Shapes. And movement. Without being focused on the details. I actually took many of the best underwater photos I'd ever taken. I wasn't worried about focusing on a particular coral or fish. I was looking at the larger color patterns. So it didn't turn out to be the disaster I'd thought it was. Was doing a boat dive and came up to find 20 foot swells. We just had to chill for a while down under until the boat would calm down and we could actually grab the ladder without getting smashed. I remember seeing the ladder going up and down 6-8 feet at a time. I finally grabbed the rope and climbed up as fast as I could. I hung onto the ladder and the boat crew grabbed my BCD and hauled me out of the water and onto the swim step. Half the divers puked on the way back into port. That was the roughest conditions that I have ever been diving in. I'm hardly a deep sea diver. My deepest dive to date is 111. This incident actually happened in about 8 feet of water. Crystal River. Florida. Known for attracting manatees in the winter. They don't let you scuba dive there anymore. And the dive master suggested snorkeling this dive because it was shallow and it scares the manatees off. It was my first set of dives out of certification. I was putting my gear on damn it. So there's two manatees in the immediate area. An older juvenile who was hanging out and loving the attention from the snorkelers. And what we assumed was likely his mother. I had a little disposable underwater camera. As soon as I hit the bottom. The big one approached me. I moved the camera out of my face and she just got closer and closer us until she literally grabbed the regulator out of my mouth. Luckily my skills were still very fresh in my mind and I calmly grabbed my octo. But I spent the entire dive trying to get far enough away to get pictures of her. She was a nosy pest. Edit. I do have pictures from that trip but they are on a CD at my father's house. I will see if I can get my old PC booted up to retrieve them when I'm there on Monday. Edit 2. I honestly thought my old Flickr account had been wiped. I was able to screen grab a couple I had uploaded. I wear contacts so getting water in my mask is extra bad as I can open my eyes underwater. Shortly after being told about a shark colliding with my friend from behind and removing his mask I am pretty scared about this. Not sharks in general. And I see a shark heading for me. They are curious. They often shoulder bump you as they turn at the last second. 
but she wasn't changing course. I stayed calm and still as long as I could and at the last second before she hit my mask I ducked. Except instead of ducking under I just headbutted her right in the nose. Everyone saw and thinks it was the funniest thing ever. I may be the only person alive who headbutted an 11 foot shark in the nose but it was because I was scared she would take my goggles off. My biology teacher told us that she once was swimming in the south of the Philippines because she was trying to find an elusive seahorse and she went quite deep at night when they are more active and she got attacked by a shark and her team got out fast. The next day they found a turtle that was bitten in half shell included that was pretty big and it's it supposedly the last time she went diving in that area. Not me but my brother. And not deep sea. Sorry. He was 18. Part of the dive club at his school. They went on a diving trip. The crew that handled the dive counted heads wrong and halfway through the dive the boat went back to shore without them. So there they were 2 kilometers from shore with their only option to swim back. There were about 5 of them. 2 girls 3 guys. All of them between 15 and 18 yo. About halfway through one of the girls couldn't swim anymore and started crying. My brother along with another guy swam with her. Dragging her along. Making sure she didn't drown. Everyone made it out okay. Worst part. School tried to hide it. And had the audacity to suspend my brother from school for catching him with a beer while on the trip. Needless to say they were in deep it when it came out. Not sure exactly what happened though. Honestly the things that really scare me. Makes my heart run fast etcr2. 1. If my air consumption looks funky suggesting a leak or the current is suddenly fast. Basically anything that could lead to a life threatening issue due to running out of air. When you're deep, you can't just fly back up and be fine. 2. Hurting reefs. Like honestly if my hand brushes against one, even dead, or get super close so the dust unsettles because of the current or something I feel so, so, so guilty. My family got certified while I was in high school. Our last dive was open water. We decided we would do it on vacation. All other dives were in the states in a pool. Wreck dive about 200 yards offshore. Not sure why but mom's tank went empty way faster than everyone else's while we were out at sea. She didn't realize it until it was less than 5%. We surfaced and started swimming back. But she panicked. She was an experienced swimmer and snorkeler but she couldn't handle it with the other scuba gear. We whistled for help. And the locals thought we were just being tools. Didn't realize she was struggling. We kept her up and got her back. Finally about 50 yards out they realized we were towing in a diver in distress. Everything turned out okay. I haven't been scuba diving since. My brother went on to become a dive master. Sorry not really a deep sea dive. TL. Doctor I fell off I lap while diving. The weather had been pretty hot and the water temp was also around 26 C. We'd done a dive and a long swim in the morning. We then headed out for our second dive and the boat dropped us in the wrong spot. So we had to swim against a massive current to get to our intended site. Halfway into the swim I just felt like I needed a nap. And so, I closed my eyes and did exactly that. It felt so peaceful. I immediately dropped down to an even deeper depth and was lucky that one of the guys on the dive turned around at that moment and saw what was happening. He swam as fast as he could towards me and caught me. He asked if I was okay. I said I was and passed out again. This time spitting my reg out and started blowing bubbles. He then went behind me. Shoved my reg back in. Wrapped his arms around me and took me straight to the surface. He saved my life. I dove the great blue hole of Belize when I was 16. I was 150 feet underwater. And about a total of a dozen bull reef sharks were swimming above and below me in circles. Regardless of all of the sharks. 11 stroke 10 coolest experience I've ever had. Only thing that really scares me is lung expansion injuries. So the one time I was freaked out was swimming near a wreck at about 100 feet. I lost perspective. And buoyancy control. And suddenly realized I had surfaced about 40 feet in 30s or less. Visions of the bends and a popped lung instantly came to mind and dropped a ton of air from my BC to get back to depth in a hurry. Got a massive squeeze from it in my ears. But it gave me a chance to calm the duck down and get a better sense of where I was and re-establish buoyancy control. Bottom line. The scariest things that can happen while driving is that you can do to yourself. 
Not exactly deep but I was doing my certification dive for my paddy basic open water diver certification. I was at about 35 feet when my regulator started free flowing. We'd been taught to put our tongues against the roof of our mouth to still breathe in that scenario and it worked just fine in the 70 degree pool. Unfortunately I was in a 40 degree lake. The temperature of which adds a bit of stress and anxiety no matter the depth. I was fine until the tongue technique didn't work and I grabbed my backup regulator. When I tried to clear it of water and breathe from the backup yet still managed to suck water. I panicked. Thankfully it being a certification dive and all. There was a diver master with my little group. I signaled an emergency ascent and he and I shot to the surface. I was in a complete panic like I've never known before or since. I was convinced I was dead. Once we got to the surface he was smart enough to reach between my flailing arms and inflate my BCD. After a few seconds he was able to calm me down. But I was unable to complete the dive. Every time my face went under the surface, I started having a panic attack. Eventually I pushed through. Before it was said and done, I got my advanced certification. Which involved a dive to 110 feet and a number of other challenges. Unfortunately after that accident, diving gave me pretty bad anxiety and got to a point where pushing through was no longer worth it. It's been a long time since then and I'm not sure how I'd react now. Maybe after all this time I'd enjoy it again. Diving at Gordon Rocks in the Galapagos. We had hoped to see hammerhead sharks that frequent the area. This is a pinnacle surrounded by deep water and strong currents. Our guide had us hold onto the rocks and wait to see who came by. While we were waiting a group of 10 reef sharks were circling above us while two lager mori eels were popping their heads out a few feet away, opening their mouths letting us know they mean business. Needles to say I was a bit nervous and burning through my air at a rapid rate. Suddenly a group of dozen hammerhead sharks came into view. We had not really discussed what we would do. The guide motioned for us to follow and the next thing I know we are swimming with the school of sharks. This only lasted a few minutes before they broke away from the group. We began to move into our safety stop zone where currents were pushing us in different directions when I suddenly ran out of air. You don't get much warning when suddenly there is nothing left. So here I am 15 feet or so underwater unable to reach my partner's secondary air being forced to surface when I should still be chi island. At least the second time I ran out of air was user error on my wife's part, anniversary dive, and I was able to get to the secondary air and get back to the surface safely. Oh and then there was the time diving bloody bay wall in the Caymans where there is a 5000 foot drop and my partner was nasted out and kept going deeper nearly exceeding the recreational limit of 120 feet or so. If I had not grabbed her she might still slowly be falling into the abyss. Diving is super fun. I was diving in the early 90s off the coast of Florida. I had been using a spearfish ineffectually for a few minutes when I heard a strange grinding noise to my right. I turned my head to see an enormous set of barracuda jaws grinding just inches from my face. I still recall the fish's eye rotating around to check me out as if considering it should take a bite or not. It wasn't exactly a deep dive, but it was one of the most terrifying moments of my life. I was on a beach dive with my parents, having swum from the beach out to a small reef and then descending. It was only a few minutes after getting down to the reef that something started going on with my parents. My mother was agitated and clutching her chest. We surfaced and she started spitting up dark liquid and struggling to breathe. Fortunately, it was a busy beach and after we inflated an emergency boy, lifeguards rushed out and carried her back to the shore where an ambulance waited. It turned out she'd had swimmer's edema induced by the greater pressure. Things turned out fine. But having a medical emergency underwater in the ocean is especially level of scary. I was diving with a mom, her husband, and their son on a night dive. I dk how many dives they've been on but the mom for some reason decided to just go up without signaling anyone why. She did a thumbs up signal which means she needs to go up and when the dive instructor signaled back asking why she just went up. So the guide is trying to get her to come down when a boat comes across and runs her right over. I forget the exact size of the boat but it was big dual motor. Blood was everywhere and we had to rush out because there were a lot of sharks in the area. She died instantly I assume. I didn't see much once we surfaced as I was busy vomiting from everything. Edit. I realize I worded this poorly. So I reworded it. 
The people with the worst stories aren't here to tell the tale. Night dive on the Great Barrier Reef with my partner who was learning to dive. Myself. About 10 years of diving. And a diver master. First night dive for my partner. Who had been hearing from the two of us about how incredible it is. Night diving is one of those amazing. Life changing experiences completely different to daytime diving as the sights and sounds of the reef are radically different. Plus viewing the reef through just the small areas of light from your torches changes how you process the experience. It's exhilarating and incredibly zen at the same time. As we're circling back to the boat, the sharks who have been standoffish but curious, as they usually are, come in and one has an eye inquisitive bite of the diver master's fins. Never seen or heard of sharks getting this aggressive with divers. So the three of us damn near catapulted ourselves out of the water and cut the dive short. I've never been worried about sharks while diving until that moment. Normally, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. But not this time. I was diving under an oil rig between Long Beach and Catalina Island. I was collecting sea scallops at around 60 feet or so and knowing that there were seals all around I always kept an eye out for sharks. You just can't help but think about them. So I was just about to finish my dive but I was looking for one more scallop for dinner and I saw a blur swoosh right by me just in front of my face. My initial immediate reaction was shark. But it was just a damn seal playing with me. I literally was screaming underwater for a couple of seconds. Funny thing is I have over 25 logged open water dives. Some at night. Mostly around Catalina and I never saw shark.